Have you ever wondered why your house doesn't collapse when the wind blows or why a tall building doesn't topple over? Well, hold on to your hats because we're about to embark on a journey into the world of structures and design. It's a world that's as fascinating as it is crucial to our everyday lives. Now, when we think of structures, we often picture buildings or bridges. But structures are everywhere, from the chair you're sitting on to the bones in your body. They're the skeleton of our world, providing support, stability and shape to everything around us. But not all structures are made the same. In fact, they can be broadly classified into three categories. Solid structures, frame structures, and shell structures. Solid structures are the strong, silent types. They're hefty, they're sturdy, and they're often made of a single piece of material. Think of a dam or a pyramid. These are solid structures. They hold their ground and don't budge easily. Next, we have frame structures. These are the social butterflies of the structure world. They're made up of several parts joined together to form a skeleton that can support a lot of weight. Your bicycle? That's a frame structure. And lastly, we have shell structures. These are the elegant swans of the structure world. They're thin, lightweight, and often hollow, but don't let that fool you. They're incredibly strong for their weight. Eggshells and car bodies are great examples of shell structures. But how do these structures stay upright? How do they withstand the forces of nature and the pressures of everyday use? And why do some structures fail while others stand the test of time? The answers to these questions lie in the science of structures and design. It's a science that combines physics and engineering, creativity and practicality. It's a science that's as much about beauty and elegance as it is about strength and durability. Well, it's not magic, it's all about the science of structures and design. So buckle up, because we're just getting started. Ever tried balancing a broom on your fingertip? Not as easy as it sounds, right? Let's dive into the gravity of the situation and reveal the secret behind the balancing act. It's all about the center of gravity, an imaginary point where the weight of an object is concentrated. Think of it as the star performer in a balancing act. If you've ever wondered why a skyscraper doesn't topple over with a gust of wind or why a bicycle stays upright when it's moving, you're thinking about the center of gravity. The center of gravity is critical for a structure's stability. Picture a tightrope walker holding a long pole. The longer the pole, the lower the center of gravity, and the more stable the walker. Now let's imagine a game of Jenga. As you remove blocks, the tower's center of gravity shifts. If it moves too far from the center, the tower collapses. Similarly, if a building's center of gravity shifts too far due to, say, an earthquake, it may fall. But it's not just about where the center of gravity is, it's also about how high or low it is. Generally, the lower the center of gravity, the more stable the structure. Think about why sports cars are designed to be low to the ground. And here's a fun fact. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is still standing because its center of gravity is within its base. Despite its lean, the tower hasn't toppled over. Yet. Yet remember, the center of gravity isn't a fixed point in all structures. In moving objects like airplanes, the center of gravity changes with the distribution of passengers and cargo. Pilots must always be aware of this to maintain stability. So when engineers design structures from bridges to buildings, they need to consider the center of gravity. It's a delicate balance, like a dance between the structure and the forces of nature. And just like a dancer, a structure needs to be flexible yet stable, bending but not breaking. The center of gravity plays a critical role in this dance. It's the lead, guiding the structure's every move, making sure it stays upright and doesn't stumble. So, a structure's stability is as much about its design as its dance with gravity. If I push a wall and it doesn't move, does it mean the wall is lazy or there's something else at play? Let's dive into the invisible world of force, the unseen sculptor of structures. When we talk about force, four elements come into play. Magnitude, direction, point of application, and plane of application. First off, magnitude. This is simply the size of the force we're applying. Imagine trying to push a car. If you're applying a small magnitude of force, the car won't budge. But if a superhero flies by and applies a larger magnitude of force, that car is going to move. Next is direction. Just as it sounds, this is the path along which the force is applied. If you push a car from the front, it goes backward. But if you push it from the side, it goes sideways. Simple, right? Then we have the point of application. This is where the force is applied on a structure. If I push a door at the handle, it swings open. But if I push the same door in the middle, it's a lot more difficult to open. Lastly, we have the plane of application. This is the imaginary flat surface where the force is applied. Imagine trying to topple a tall bookshelf. If you apply force at the bottom plane, the bookshelf may tilt and fall. But if you apply the same force at the top plane, the bookshelf is more likely to remain standing. 
Every structure we interact with responds to these four elements of force. Whether we are pushing a wall, opening a door, or trying to move a car, the structure's response depends on the magnitude, direction, point, and plane of application of the force. This is how force silently sculpts our surroundings, shaping the stability and function of structures. So the next time you push a wall and it doesn't budge, remember, it's not the wall, it's the force. Why do snowflakes look so perfect? Is Mother Nature just showing off, or is there a reason behind it? Let's dive into the stunning world of symmetry. It's a concept that's all around us, from the architectural marvels we admire to the natural wonders that leave us awestruck. Symmetry is not just about aesthetics, it's an integral part of structure and design. But what exactly is symmetry? Well, it's a fundamental attribute of both physical and abstract systems, characterized by the invariance of a system under a set of transformations. In simpler terms, it's balance, it's harmony, it's when one half mirrors the other. In the realm of structures, symmetry plays a crucial role. A symmetrical structure is balanced and therefore more stable. Think about the Eiffel Tower or the Great Pyramids of Giza. These structures have stood the test of time, thanks in part to their symmetrical design. But it's not just man-made structures, nature is a master of symmetry. Remember our snowflake example? Each one is a marvel of hexagonal symmetry. This isn't just Mother Nature showing off her artistic skills, this symmetrical design is a result of the way water molecules arrange themselves as they freeze. It's efficient, it's stable, and yes, it's beautiful. In the world of design and engineering, symmetry is a tool, a principle that guides the creation of structures that are not only pleasing to the eye, but also functional and stable. From the symmetry of a bicycle that allows for balanced, efficient movement, to the symmetry of a bridge that evenly distributes weight to maintain stability, it's clear that symmetry is far more than just a pleasing design element. So next time you're admiring a snowflake, a building, or even looking in the mirror, take a moment to appreciate the symmetry. It's not just about beauty, it's about balance, stability, and function. Turns out beauty, or in this case symmetry, isn't just skin deep. Ever built a sandcastle that didn't survive the tide? Well, real structures can fail too, and here's why. Structures, whether they're towering skyscrapers or tiny Lego models, are subject to forces that can lead to their failure. Understanding these factors is crucial in the world of design and engineering. And no, it's not about the structure waking up on the wrong side of the bed or having a bad day, it's about the science and design behind it. The first factor is one we've already learned about today. It's the force of gravity. It's the same old force that keeps your feet on the ground, but when it comes to structures, it can be a real party pooper. A structure's center of gravity must be stable and well-balanced. If it's not, the structure can tip over or collapse. It's like trying to balance a pencil on its tip. It needs perfect equilibrium. The second factor is the external forces. These can be anything from a gust of wind to an earthquake's shake. Even the daily wear and tear can add up over time, causing structures to weaken and eventually fail. It's like that old pair of jeans you love, they're comfortable, they fit perfectly, but one day, the wear and tear catch up, and they rip. The third factor is the material used in the structure. Not all materials are created equal. Some can withstand more stress and strain than others. It's like comparing a paper umbrella to a metal one. The paper umbrella might look pretty, but it's not going to hold up in a storm. The fourth factor is the design and construction. Poor design or shoddy construction can lead to structural failure. It's like baking a cake without a recipe. You might get lucky, but more often than not, you'll end up with a kitchen disaster. So structural failure isn't about bad luck, it's about good design, or the lack of it. Remember, the strength of a structure doesn't come from its size or how tough it looks, but from the careful consideration of these factors. Because as we all know, even the biggest sandcastle can't stand against the tide if it isn't built right. Why is a hammer not made of glass? Because it would be a smashing disaster, right? Now let's dig into why certain materials are chosen over others for different jobs. Choosing the right material for a task isn't as easy as picking the prettiest or cheapest option. There's a whole slew of factors at play. Engineers and designers must consider the properties of potential materials, such as their strength, flexibility, and durability. For example, a skyscraper needs a material that can withstand the forces of wind and gravity, like steel or concrete, while a disposable water bottle needs a lightweight, inexpensive material like plastic. The environment where the product or structure will exist is another crucial factor. Materials must be able to hold up under the conditions they'll face. 
Take for instance a bridge in a coastal city. It must be made with materials that resist corrosion from the salty sea air. Then there's the matter of efficiency. The material chosen should be easy to work with and available in sufficient quantities. If you're building a house, wood might be your go-to because it's relatively easy to cut and shape, and there's plenty of it around. The material's impact on the environment is increasingly a factor too. A material that's environmentally friendly, recyclable, or sustainable might be preferred over one that's not. That's why bamboo, a rapidly renewable resource, is popping up in everything from flooring to clothing. Cost is of course a biggie. The chosen material must fit within the budget. But remember, cheaper isn't always better. Sometimes a higher upfront cost can pay off in the long run with durability and lower maintenance costs. There's no one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to choosing materials. It's a complex decision-making process that involves balancing various factors. But when it's done right, the result is a structure or product that's strong, efficient, environmentally friendly, and cost-effective. So, it's not about having the right stuff, it's about using the right stuff. Why do engineers spend more time on their computers than social media influencers? Well, it's not because they're playing the latest video game or binge-watching cat videos, they're actually hard at work ensuring the safety of the structures we use every day. Safety in structures isn't just about making sure they don't fall apart, it's about understanding how each piece of the puzzle interacts with the other, how the forces applied to one area can affect another, and how changing one small element can have a ripple effect throughout the entire structure. It's about considering every possible scenario, from the everyday to the extraordinary, and making sure that the structure can withstand them all. Engineers use a variety of methods to assess the safety of structures. One of these is computer simulations. These allow engineers to model how a structure will behave under different conditions, and to see the effects of changes in design or materials before they're actually implemented. It's like a virtual testing ground, where structures can be put through their paces, without any real-world consequences. Another method is physical testing. This involves building scale models of structures and subjecting them to forces that mimic those they would experience in real life. It's a bit like playing with building blocks except with a lot more math and a lot less knocking things over for fun. And it doesn't stop once a structure is built. Engineers and other professionals continue to monitor structures throughout their lifespan, checking for signs of wear and tear, and making necessary repairs or modifications to ensure continued safety. But it's not just about the structures themselves. The materials used in construction also play a vital role in safety. Engineers have to consider things like strength, durability, and resistance to environmental conditions when choosing materials. It's a bit like cooking. You wouldn't use marshmallows to make a steak dinner, just like you wouldn't use cardboard to build a skyscraper. So, the next time you see an engineer glued to their screen, remember, they're probably saving lives, one structure at a time. So, what have we learned today apart from the fact that engineering is cooler than you thought? Well, we've dived into the fascinating world of structures, from solid structures to frame and shell structures. We've discovered how the center of gravity can make or break a structure's stability, quite literally. Forces, those invisible sculptors, have shown us their unpredictable nature, altering magnitude, direction and points of application on a whim. We've reveled in the aesthetic and functional power of symmetry in structures, and we've seen how imperfections or miscalculations can lead to structural failures. We've also explored the importance of choosing the right material for the job, considering factors such as durability, cost, and suitability. Lastly, we've looked at the crucial role of engineers and other professionals in assessing, improving, and maintaining the safety of structures. Remember, structures are everywhere, and understanding them can help us build a safer, more efficient world. So keep questioning, keep learning, and keep building.